After Starship SN15 landed successfully, it seems that SpaceX is no longer interested in the suborbital hops and would rather like to go big with Starship SN20 and Super Heavy BN3. In the past week, the majority of development at Starbase has been around the orbital test campaign. SpaceX engineers have already started stacking the Super Heavy BN3 and the speed of construction of the orbital launch pad is also increasing rapidly. For reference, the orbital launch tower is going to be 140 meters tall, a full 20 meters taller than Starship and Super Heavy stacked together. On the other front, after being on the suborbital launch pad B for almost two weeks, Starship SN15 is getting ready to be rolled back to the build site. It is now almost clear that the prototype will not have any reflight, at least for the time being. And looking at the future prototypes that are currently under active construction, SpaceX is also going to skip Starship SN17. So as of now, the only prototypes that are under construction are Starship SN20 and Super Heavy BN2 and BN3. SN16 is fully stacked and will most likely be the last prototype to undergo a suborbital launch. After successfully completing a 10km flight, it makes complete sense for SN16 to launch for higher altitudes like 20km or more. This will be a good test bed for SpaceX before they eventually test Starship to its extreme with the orbital flight test. Earlier, SpaceX had plans to conduct a 150 meter hop test with Super Heavy BN2. However, with the recent push towards orbital flight, BN2 is likely going to be a smaller test tank similar to Starship SN7. Currently, the plan is to use BN2 for cryogenic pressure tests in order to determine any structural issues with Super Heavy's design. Recently, the thrust dome and the internal structures for Super Heavy BN3 were spotted at the manufacturing facility. Based on the complexity, it looks like SpaceX is going to risk using 28 engines for BN3. Out of the 28 engines for Super Heavy Booster, the outer ring will consist of 20 Raptors while the inner ring will house the remaining 8. Only the inner 8 Raptor engines will have the thrust vector control capabilities while the outer ones will be stationary, providing as much thrust as possible. In the past, Elon Musk has said that during the first orbital flight tests, the booster will have the minimum number of engines required in order to reach orbit. Because in case the booster undergoes rapid unscheduled disassembly, SpaceX will be losing all the 28 Raptors, which is very costly. So it will be interesting to see how many Raptors will be used for BN3. However, for BN3 to be flight worthy, the booster will need to undergo a cryogenic pressure test and also a static fire test. SpaceX engineers also need to figure out how to place the heat shield tiles on Starship SN20. Not to mention that for the orbital flight, the launch tower should also be completed by then. So based on the amount of work that still needs to be done, a launch date for August or September is much more realistic. SpaceX however is not going to slow down. The engineers have already started manufacturing parts for Starship SN21. Just like the suborbital flights, the initial orbital test flights are most likely going to fail. As already discussed in the previous video, the aim for the first orbital flight test is to understand how Starship behaves under orbital flight regime and make suitable changes in future prototypes based on the data gathered during these flights. It is now being understood that the next major design upgrade is going to be with Starship SN24 and Super Heavy BN7. So as Starship moves towards the orbital flights, the RUDs are going to be even more spectacular. But one thing is almost clear, that by the end of this year, we'll most probably see a successful Starship orbital flight test. That's all for today's video. If you like the content, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.